Good evening, Corin. Thank you very much for your time. Now, the financial year started on the 1st of July. It has to be now passed by the 10th of July. What has to happen uh, this week to get it passed? Good evening. Well, essentially, um, we're already in overtime, so there is some political um, provincial intervention in that every cent that's been spent since last Wednesday needs to be approved by the MEC, the provincial MEC for finance. Um, otherwise, what's happening is the city of Johannesburg is essentially spending an unauthorized budget, and we know it has a massive budget that runs into billions of rands. So already we, we're into the new financial year as of the 1st of July, um, and really the city council has a, a, what amounts to a last chance to pass a budget. Um, if this doesn't happen, it the, the next move would really be to dissolve the council. Now, why did it not pass? Is it the sort of political toing and froing we're seeing? We, we don't really know. Um, the, the reason given for, for the, I mean, the, the first reason of it was left too late. Um, it was a meeting for the new financial year, the first meeting that was postponed. And, and then the second meeting, which was meant to happen last week, was delayed for legal reasons. Um, that's essentially what we, we've been told. Um, but the broad context, of course, is that there isn't a majority party in Johannesburg City Council. So there need to be, need to be coalition arrangements and agreements. And it, it makes whoever's governing the metro quite a difficult situation. So we, we can only assume that there must be some negotiations and deliberations around the priorities of the budget. What does this mean for the average Joburg citizen? Is it really inconsequential at this stage? I don't think it is inconsequential. I think um, practically we, we, you know, we'll, we'll still have our, our water and our lights and and day-to-day -day services should be uninterrupted. I think what is consequential is that we have missed quite a significant deadline. Um, it shows quite significant in, uh, political instability. And if we look at the Auditor General's results, where we have high levels of instability, that does eventually start to feed through into a council's administration. So really for administrators, it means that they because of high levels of political intervention and intrigue, they'll keep their head down. They won't necessarily focus on long-term projects. So it, it is a concern. We might not see it immediately, um, but but we really have missed quite a quite a major deadline in the local government calendar. Now you say it's not completely clear why the budget was not passed on the first, and that we're essentially in overtime now. But what does it suggest with the local elections? due to happen next year if they're not postponed, about the ability of coalitions to work together? I, I think um, for, for a lot of voters there will be quite a lot of thinking that, that needs to be done around how poorly coalitions are fared. Um, the major metro coalitions, Chwane, Johannesburg and Nelson Mandela Bay, have not been stable, have not seen um, the sort of success in terms of service delivery that voters maybe wanted. So it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see whether it changes. Um, I'm, I'm not sure whether any governing party or any coalition governing party has managed to, to demonstrate that they can have cohesion with partners um, that's, that's led to something desirable for voters. What happens if the budget does not get passed by the end of this week? Then what? We'll, we'll have an administrator appointed by um, the province um, who will be in charge of running the city. Um, this is something that's happening in Chwane already, so that's that's not necessarily a problem. I think the interesting thing is if council gets dissolved, um, what because in, in theory there should be 90 days before the, a series of by-elections, and I can't imagine with the COVID-19 pandemic that this will be feasible. So um, the, from a legal perspective, it will become quite interesting. Well, thank you very much for your time this evening. Karen, he's a, she's an economist at research company Municipal IQ.